Are you guys struggling with deciding what's good positioning and what's not? This video is for you. We're gonna be expecting a lot of good players and going over the high ground, low ground positioning, when to use it, when not to use it, and also how to maintain it. If you enjoy the video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel today, but let's dive into it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been doing a little bit of variety here on the channel lately. We've been showing you videos on what to do, meaning really good high kill games, viewer submissions that show you a nice balance of both and then of course these videos here that i titled the series stop doing this crap all right guys right off the rip respect taking your boy mr mel gaming now we're laying prone on the rooftop maybe he's doing more stuff maybe not but he keeps going prone standing up looking around go prone stand up looking around he could be multitasking i'm not sure but if you guys find yourself camping on rooftops like this not doing much remember stop doing this crap that's right y'all y'all guessed it the idea behind getting better is to get in as many fights as possible I know TTK is wild. I know that bots can kill you all the time. I understand this game is just real weird, but no matter what, the only way your reflexes are going to get better, the only way your accuracy is going to get better, the only way your decision making is going to get better is if you're putting yourself in unfortunate positions, meaning you're pushing enemies. So lo and behold, no one's here. We do get our loadout, so bless up there. Now, I would recommend a UAV, right? We're in a hot area. Normally, I'd say buy a UAV and just sit on it. But we're in a hot area. I'd buy UE also, throw that thing up, and then I would go and get my loadout. Because if enemies are around and they see this loadie, they'll probably end up watching it and we could get clapped. And we... There it is. All right, so Mr. Mel, Strangely enough, started firing at the enemy without even like, he wasn't even in this crosshair. He just prayed to God the guy was on the ladder and sprayed. And for some odd reason, the enemy committed to it. Now, the moment the enemy jumped to that ladder and he got shot at, he should have broke away and says, no, no thanks. Screw this shit, I'm out. And, and then just ran away and re-challenged the fight at a different angle. But committing to that ladder when you're already getting shot at, that is just crazy. Stop doing this crap. Now we do have UAV up. Remember, we can't see their pings because Activision glitches. Yeah, I know it's fucking weird. Also, I can't pull up the map because again, yeah, Activision glitches. I know it's weird, um, but here we are. Weird! Just living our best life. All right, but you know, I think he was, I think he was doing some AFK stuff. I'm gonna cut out him just laying on the rooftop for the first three minutes. He could have been doing some other shit. I think he was, because now we finally have some motion. So you notice the ping. I'm assuming he pulled up the mini the map and he pinged the last enemy he saw on his UAV. Did you hear glass breaking next to us on our right hand side? He heard it as well. We also have the portable radar we could definitely throw out. Really just help us analyze this dude's exact location, but we're gonna camp the buy instead. Now, the enemy's at the buy by all means, but if he's under us and he comes up this ladder. But he didn't. He went to the buy. Now, what did Mr. Enemy do that was incorrect? Two things. One, he should have heard our footsteps on the, on the rooftop. No doubt about it. Should have heard us. We heard him. He should have heard us. Two, never go prone at a buy station unless there's an enemy on the opposite side shooting at you and going prone protects you. I'll never understand why players decide just to lay at buy stations, lay out loadouts when they're not being contested, just out of the fear they're gonna be contested because that guy right there, did prone save him? No. If anything, the animation to stand back up screwed him over. He didn't have enough time. He didn't have enough time because the TTK is so fast to stand up and run away. If he was standing up, he could have reacted, could have thrown something, done something, maybe. But that is just not the way to do it. Going prone right there is just, you're committing to being at the buy for an extended period of time. Go up to the buy, buy what you need, dip out. Granted, if you're stuck in the buy, you're probably gonna die anyway because this buy station is completely whack compared to the last one. Compared to Warzone 1, I should say. Now, I've, I've been sitting here wondering why would, why would Activision intentionally ruin this game, right? Despite how you feel about it, if you're having fun, you know, we all have fun days and, and, and cool if you're having fun, but despite however you may feel personally, this game has definitely fallen off. It's lost a massive chunk of players in only five months. 
So something's wrong with it. And it occurred to me today because the UK blocked Microsoft acquisition of Activision that maybe they're tanking their game so it looks crappy on paper and maybe Sony won't care and they'll stop blocking shit. Food for thought. Those of you guys out there that know the stuff more than me, let me know what you think. Completely off topic, but what else are you going to do? Hopefully this bounty here soon. His movement seems pretty good. He seems like a really good player, honestly. I started off trolling the fact he's on a rooftop, but again, I think he was multitasking because uh, he's on it now. Movement's good. Reticle placement's good. Shots have been great. Decision-making patience. That might not be the best thing in the world, but in his defense, you can't really predict enemies to be sitting there, but great job breaking away and leaving from a completely different angle. Going to throw up the Yui. And remember guys, I did that YouTube short on boost jumping. If you haven't seen the short on how to boost further than normal, make sure you go to my shorts tab here on YouTube and watch that video. I know a lot of people do know this, but most players don't. Also remember, we cannot see what's on his UAV. I wanna throw that out there again so no one thinks he's cheating. Regardless, though, we need to start thinking about rotating out of here. If this guy's still around, which I'm assuming he is, we just need to dip. And great job going to the vehicle. Just to completely focus on getting safe, first and foremost. And honestly, if we want, we can actually get out of the vehicle, use this cover, and gatekeep Joe Blow. But he's going to hit some walls instead. And that just goes back winning your fights efficiently. If you're in the enemy's perspective, dude, he should have just done something better than that. This long stalemate that a lot of people have in their mind is how you play as a guy on the jet ski. Um, get out the car, shoot him, maybe? All right, he's long gone. Let's reload and dip the hell out of here. We still have dick farm done behind us. All right, so we have the enemy on the rooftop right here. He just cracked him, and we're just going to go ahead and again get better positioning, which is a better decision, or he's going to challenge him. And it worked. Yo, the enemy didn't shoot at us. He just stood there staring at us. Incredible. Skill. It's wild. Stop doing that crap. If you're going to if you're going to peek the enemy with half your body exposed, please shoot him. Please. If you're going to shoot at a moving vehicle, make sure you try to, again, shoot him. To be fair, we probably shouldn't have killed that guy anyway, but... The enemy played that completely wrong and hopefully eventually stops doing this crap. Mr. Mel, I don't know if you watch the channel or not, but are you getting yelled at right now? He's done a lot of AFK stuff in this match. Load up to our right hand side. I'd like to see him maybe get his. Nope. And that's fine. You don't have to grab your second class. It's always nice to have a loadie there for when you if you die and you come back. But never mind, we're going to it. Now there's a vehicle part next to it. Peasants in this game love camping loadies. So I'm fully expecting a peasant to be camping this bitch, and so does he. That's why he's scouting around. I'm assuming from his perspective, he's probably looking around and he said, never mind, I'm out. Saw something he didn't like. Dipped out completely. Remember, camp, camp and looties. It is it is a peasant fucking tactic. I, I hate to tell you guys, but don't do that. Stop doing that crap. A lot of vehicles around here right now. Of course, two of them are spawns. Three of them are not. So right now, I'm, I, I'm believing there's a lot of enemies here. We could zip line and get to the, the high buildings over here. Can't pull up the map. But we could go to the top building, start left-hand side, and, and maybe fight the little bit of people that are here. We could go to the buy station and see if there's another UAV. Or we can loot. 
Now, again, I do believe there are people here, and it's kind of crazy we just abandoned a vehicle to come to the low ground. Granted, he may be slowly working his way to the zip. But if there are enemies above us, I'm shocked they're not pushing our shit in right now. Actually, I shouldn't be shocked. Nobody moves in this game. All right, taking the zip line. Switching to his close range weapon in case he lands on a team or a player. And boom, there's a tall building. That's exactly what we're talking about. I think it's an A. It's definitely a bot, but he's shooting at somebody. It may be us, actually. All right, now this is not a bad spot to play if you guys want to play for position. If you guys are just like, I don't want to go for kill savage, just teach me how to win slowly. This is how you do it. You want to play high grounds. You want to play uh, the best buildings and positions within the next zone. Now beware of this chopper. It could be an AI chopper. It is an AI chopper, never mind. But this is a good spot, a good tactic for slow gameplay. But you got to be aware. You got to be looking around you. Because the last thing you want to do is allow people to push the zip line and, and lose out on easy kills. Stun's going off behind or under us. We got a car coming up behind us. I really wouldn't waste my time with him. Playing slower is, is a great strat. Playing position is a fantastic strat. It's probably one of the best. Now, the reason why I teach you guys to be aggressive is because, again, playing slow is probably the best way to win. It is the best way to win. But if you're playing slow like this and you can't win your gunfights, meaning you end up getting to the end game and all of a sudden you get a gunfight and you die, you waste the 20 minutes of your life. That's why I want you guys to get aggressive and practice fighting. Once you get the hang of just having decent gunfights, then you can play tactical and strategical and play high grounds and positionings all you want. I just think a lot of people watch wind grinders, they watch gameplay like this, or we're going on wind streaks, and they're like, that's how I need to play, but they just skip the beginning fundamentals. All the guys that went go on wind streaks and drop nukes and things like that, they can all shoot. You have got to be a shooter in order to be able to excel with this strategy here. Now, I'm not too sure what he's doing. We're not looking around us. We keep standing up and repinging the guy in the tower. The guy in the tower won't move for the rest of the game until the circle tells him to. That's a fact. And here we are. But how's y'all's day, man? Also, have you guys followed me on kick streaming yet? We've been streaming there. Vi's been crazy. It's been absolutely wild. Um, that will That is our main streaming platform. If you guys have been wondering where my YouTube streams are at. Damn, that thing comes back instantly. Holy shit. Oh. And yeah, thank God you can shoot it down. Comes back in six seconds. Let's go, baby. Now, I don't... Again, I think your boy might be doing some other shit. Whether he is or not, unfortunately, this is really kind of like 90% of the games I spectate. People just kind of laying there doing nothing. And again, no shots at him because I think he's a good player. I think he's just doing multiple shit. Um, but yeah, I spectate dozens of games that I never post on the channel because they're so boring, bro. Now look, hard rotation past what seems to be the swamp or marshlands. So it's saying that we got a minute and a half. If we get back, if we would have stayed on that rooftop, we could have boost jumped. Watch my YouTube short. Learn how to do that. It's a very important tactic. You can actually boost jump from this rooftop to the next rooftop. Let's see if he does it. He boost jumped. He did it. But he could actually get to the top platform. And uh, again, I can show you how to do that. But again, I think Mr. Mel is actually a really decent player. Another boost jump right there. Your boy might win the game. We, we, I don't think we've ever spectated anybody win from beginning to end in Warzone 2 before. This could be a first. But again, we need to get the hell out of here. We really need to... He's going to take the zip. The zip might disappear. He, it's, it's very close, bro. Oh, it didn't disappear. Damn. I thought when the circle got close to it, it, it just fucking broke. But I guess I'm wrong. All right, so judging by the zone that we can see, it looks like this is not center, but it's almost center. Now, let's watch this fight real quick. 
Drill charge? No? Oh, fuck. All right. He had a great position. Again, this is why he swapped to his close range weapon. He swapped, he swapped to it so that if he landed on somebody, he could be ready to fight. Great job bailing out of that though. We had a precision launched on us. And on top of that, they had a drone, a bomb drone launched on him as well. Oh shit, he might be on the hill. And again, as I was saying before we got in that fight, this is a great zone. Looks like it's center zone and look at the next circle. So again, Mr. Mel is just playing great positioning. There's no need for him to contest the sniper to our left-hand side because we have an AR. The hemlock's good, but I can't contest snipers at that range. So his option now is to literally just play his life. I hate telling you guys that this is probably the best thing for them to do, but this is probably the best thing for them to do, and here's why. You have multiple layers and multiple corridors and multiple rooms in this entire building that we're in. If you jump down, you might get one kill, but then you'll just be camping that, that next layer of roof. If you decide I'm gonna go through this entire building and fight, you're, you're probably gonna die because you're probably gonna have about five or six players in this building with you. So the chance of surviving fighting through this entire thing is very, very slim, even for the best players. So I like the fact that we're up here. Oh no. I just would like for him to be looking around. And uh, I promise I was literally about to say that when this dude landed on us, but I would have liked for him to look around. But here we are moving on to Facebook, a little demonic, and the dude's definitely demonic. Very ballsy of him um, landing on us. But again, we were distracted with other things. And notice how a little demonic was looking off. He's scanning around him. This is what you need to do. This is how you avoid having that happen to you. This is good position. This is where you want to be. But, can't jump up there. But, if you're not looking around, people can come up to you. People can cross to you. People can land on you. And it's just bad juju. He said, I'm not gonna let this happen to me. Vehicle in over to our south. Now I hate the, oh, you saw the glint, fuck. Now I hate the explosive rounds, but um, with that scope, it might be beneficial. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so we're in a very bad spot now. Again, streaks at the end of the game is just, it's ass. We talked about it earlier, uh, a few videos ago. But, he lost his high ground. If I was him, I'd try to go back up there. And remember what I said? There's gonna be multiple players in this fucking building. And there's one right there just laying prone. Why you're laying prone in the little staircase is idiotic and it's confusing to me, but hey, here you are. Probably not the only player either. We hear doors being open on us as well. Let's see if he gets back to the rooftop. Oh shit! So I didn't know the player was there either, but what gave that away was the fact we saw two Bettys through the wall using engineer, right? That's what gave that away. But again, we called it, dude. This game doesn't really require much skill as Warzone 1 did. In fact, it doesn't require as much skill as Warzone 1 did because players like that, who I think are way better than this guy, die to players like this just because he's holding the angle. Now again, that rooftop is still the best position. And if you look at the next zone, you'll see why. Because he'll be able to jump to that next rooftop and he'll essentially be safe. Everyone else can be on the low ground and fighting each other for survival. All right, we're being pushed right now. I think he's on the roof with us, yeah. To your left. He, he's, he's right there on the wall. Does he know? Oh, he jumped down. I don't know. Audi's fucked. I'm pretty, he might still be up here. I don't know. We have a durable gas mask. Good job going with the play. Yeah, I don't know where this dude went. Oh, bitch. I don't know where that one dude went, but the def second guy definitely caused a good gatekeep. And again, he was the one holding the rooftop, the best position in this zone. Now he did jump off to play low ground, which was real ballsy, but it worked out. Now this, if you're familiar with this building, it's, it's just one basic level like this.
but there's staircases, right? And then a little corridor. Let's see if this guy, Circle's favoring him. He should be able to kill this dude. He has no idea, guys, even on staircase. He has no idea. Oh, he does. He does know. All right, and Booty with 13 kills wins the game. It's a 1v1, and we're going over here. Why? Another tip, guys. Pay attention to player count. Now, the enemy probably will die to gas, but I don't think he knew he was even the only guy. But look, we expected a lot of shit. I think we expected a lot of decent players, too. Well, two decent players, and I think the moral of the story right here is three decent players. The moral of the story right here is player positioning. He should have played the high ground, the guy on the rooftop. All the guys we spectated that kept dying should have been on the high ground. Granted, uh, the guy that killed Demonic, Facebook boy, he jumped off because he got clustered. He had to, but he should have slowly worked his way back up. And again, we just knew there was a lot of people in that building. And like I said, even the best of players are gonna have struggle getting back to the roof, and he did. But the last guy that was on the roof, that killed the guy we were spectating, that died at the end. God, I wish I'd remember his name. Uh, if he would've just jumped to the next rooftop and played that, he would've been good. But he jumped down, lost his high ground, and again, it hurt his positioning. So guys, moral of the story is, positioning is king for aggressive players, passive players, goats, and bots. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe today, and I'll catch you in the next one.